Welcome to Raven Silver. Please subscribe to my channel, also hit the notification bell, like this video, and share. We're coming to you about a story about a trans rights and human rights, about a trans woman that was working for Lyft drivers to say it because sometimes they feel like you could be better if you get your own boss on Lyft. I'll share this story with you. Welcome to Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up? How you doing? How you been? What's going on? What's good? Are you getting it in? Somebody getting it for you? What's going on, people? Subscribe to my channel. Okay. Her name is Marla Standing Out. Now, a trans Lyft driver was viciously attacked by a customer. Now, she's too afraid to go to work. Now, this story is being reported as of September the... 13th, 2019, which was on a Friday. A Lyft driver in Oregon said that she's too afraid to go to her job after a transphobic customer attacked her. Marla Stanley Owl became a Lyft driver last year after she says that she lost her previous job due to her transphobic discrimination. Now, the past Friday, she picked up a man who she believed to be intoxicated at a hotel in the downtown Portland. His speech was highly slurred, she says. He could barely get into the car. He didn't even know where he was going. After about a mile, she said that he asked her to pull over. That's when he attacked her. Now, punching me in the head and in the neck, and when I reached behind the seat to stop him from attacking me further, he twisted my arm back, then popped it. As she was begging, as, as he was beating me, he was calling me all the time the effing, effing trannies. He got out. He comes around to the back and start coming towards me. I pepper sprayed him. She said as he yelled and a bit, he yelled at a bit and then ran away. She called the police and they were currently looking for the man standing out. Says that she now is too afraid to pick up anyone. Trans people are just trying to go to work like everyone else. She says, we're just trying to live our lives and days. None of us choose this. And to be physically and verbally attacked and made fun of every single day makes it very hard for most of us to even function. I lift said in the statement that the customer's account has been removed, although they can't know for sure if the account holder was the man in the car or if someone else called for the car for him. Now, safety is a fundamental to Lyft. When the driver describes the frightening and the rider access to Lyft has been permanently removed, the response immediately has been in a closed account with the driver since the incident to offer our support. We have reached out to the authorities and will continue to help in any way we can. Portland police said the attack is being investigated as a possible biased crime. No arrest has been yet made. Now, I want to share this story with you in reference to what went on in the news and stuff, give you much more idea, and let her explain it in her voice herself. Check this out. a Portland Lyft driver in what police are calling a possible bias crime. That driver is okay, but still shaken. Fox Wolves Audrey Wheels spoke to her in an interview you'll see only on 12. Audrey now joins us live from downtown Portland with where this all happened. Audrey? Right, we're on Southwest 18th and Salmon, and this is where Marla Standing Owl says that the passenger in her car started calling her names for being a trans woman and then hitting her. It was just about a year ago that Marla Standing Owl decided to become a Lyft driver. She tells me she lost her last job because of transphobia and thought driving for Lyft would be a safe option. That is until Friday night when she picked up a man near the Dunaway Hotel downtown. His speech was highly slurred. He could barely get in the car. He didn't know where he was going. They made it less than a mile to Southwest 18th Avenue and Salmon Street right by the Max stop. When she says he asked her to pull over and then started yelling at her and hitting her. Punching me in the head and the neck. And when I reached behind the seat to stop him from attacking me further, he twisted my arm back, which popped it as he was beating me and was calling me and 
effing tranny. He gets out, he comes around the back and starts coming toward me, so I pepper sprayed him. She says he continued yelling for a while and then ran off. She called 911. Now Portland police are looking for that man who they say could face bias crime charges. This shouldn't be happening. You can hate all you want, but to put your hands on someone is not right. Now she says she's too scared to pick up passengers, and that if she ever goes back to Lyft driving, she'll only do it during the day. She says she hopes that man is caught, and that what happened here can help educate others on the discrimination and violence trans people face. We're just trying to live our days, and none of us chose this. And to be physically and verbally attacked, and made fun of every single day makes it very hard for most of us to function. And Lyft couldn't tell us whether or not it was the suspect that called that Lyft for himself or if someone else called it for him, but they said either way that account was permanently removed. Now they told us they are working with police on this and helping out in any way they can. Okay. So if anybody know anything at Crime Cyber Origin, the phone number is 503-823-4357. That's 503-823-4357. That's Crime Stoppers for Origin, Portland Origin. But the thing is, it is so sad on so many levels. The discrimination and the attack. Now, this is in Portland, Oregon. This is the thing. I was going to become a Lyft driver as well. So this hits close to home with me. Because I felt like it's like I could be my own boss and basically not discriminate against. And unfortunately what I'm starting to notice when it comes to this type of work is that it's also a very risky behavior. And I noticed it because a lot of my friends kept telling me don't do this type of work because you have nothing behind your, your back or your neck when they could just grab you and start swinging on you. Which basically happened to her. Um, it's sad. My sister, my sister, my sister, you are in my prayers. And don't let this stop you. Don't let anybody stop you from what you want to do in life. At the end of the day, there's always going to be somebody, Marla, that's going to try to stop anything you try to do. But we are resilient. We fight back. And like I said before, y'all share this video everywhere you can. Because at the end of the day, somebody may have seen him punching on her, hitting on her. And know exactly who he is. I understand you get an account and stuff. They cancel the account. But we need more than you just cancel the account. We need to find out who he is. Just in case they can't do their part, we're we'll helping do our part. So somebody may have seen him hitting on her, beating on her out there in the streets. And you see her face and it's come across your screen. You contact that number. And you get him put locked up. Because this is not fair for her life to be put on hold like this. To be scared. To get in your own place to go to work. Trying to survive the best way you can. It is unheard of. But it happens. I'm noticing a lot. With Lyft drivers. And the sad part about it is it's not an LGBT thing. It seems like a universal type of thing. But here it is. A girl basically. She pepper sprayed him. And to get him off of her and stuff and he was so drunk and intoxicated red flag number one you know just stay strong my sister everybody share this video every way you can like i said my soldiers whoever mess with one of us you mess with all of us we're coming after you and we don't care so whether he was drunk before ink and hair and he's gonna wake up now like I said before, subscribe to my channel, give me the update and stuff. Isn't it so horrible here that you sit and driving somebody and the person behind you and your back can just start swinging on you? Now, this is not unheard of this to happen before. This has happened quite a few times. And it's so weird because she's trying to survive the best way she can. And it's horrible. Anyway, comment below how would you handle this because I know me. I'm going to tell you like this. I would have put that car over and baby... He would have gotten an ass whooping. He would have prayed to God the cops showed up. That's why I know I can't be a lift drop. He would have only be praying for one thing, and that was Jesus. Because that's the only man that could have stopped him from hunting. Anyway, like I said before, comment below. At the top, there's an Instagram button. If you follow me, I'll follow you back. Let you I love you. And thank you for watching, Kids 3.